I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of emotions going around in the house right now. So this is the last day of summer. Tonight we're taking the kids to Typhoon Lagoon, the water park, to kick off the last day of summer. Tomorrow school starts, and for my kids, it'll be the first time that they're actually in physical classes since the onset of the pandemic. So it's been over two years since they've had a classroom setting. It's all been virtual school, and they did great, but they're itching to get back into the class. And we're itching for them to get back in the class. At the same time, we're going to miss having everybody around. I have three young kids. Two of them are in school. One is perhaps starting preschool this fall. We're on the waiting list, and so we'll see how that goes. And um, I don't think we're going to be used to a quiet house. And so that's what's going on around here. And well, today I'm really excited to show you the next step of the accordion menus. Last week we talked about the basics of how to create an accordion menu, the basic components of that. And today we're gonna to elaborate on that. And so let's just get a tour, a run through of what we're gonna to cover today. So last week I gave you these two accordion items. So one was data. Data is what a baby calls its father, or maybe it's data. I guess the baby would pronounce it data. Um, and then Snapchat is Thanos' favorite social media platform. And you notice they're formatted slightly different. I went over the format last week in the video, so if you missed that, go ahead and click the link up there and we'll get you caught up. Today we're gonna look more about formatting. We're gonna take this concept of these basic accordion structures and we're going to color code them. So you can see right here, and I use Snapchat for all of the glossary items, all of the accordion menu items, just because copy and paste, and I was a little bit lazy, but the concepts are there. And then I have this other one where we have different padding, and so there's different distances from the arrow and the item, the words here, in the rows. And then I added color coding, did some gradient stuff, and so I'll walk through how I did that. I also added emojis, and so we'll talk through the emojis and what that does. We can also change the size of the words and the arrows and the emojis. And then we can have some interesting interactions using the principles of the code here. I can click to expand and I can offer a GIF and then I can click to hide that. So you can show it and then you can hide it. So that's really interesting. And then you can make a quick links box over to the right here. And these are expanded. Let me redo those. So Here's the quick links, and then I can click on that to have you know different links, and then maybe an FAQ or whatever content that you would want to put in there. And so this is what we're going to cover today. How did I get all this code? And how can you take the code and modify it to get the effect that you want in your Canvas course? So before we get into that, I wanna talk really briefly about fundraising. So as you know, I have the website howtocanvas.com, and here I put a lot of my tutorials, since I can't share the code that I use in my videos right on YouTube, then I rely on blog posts to share that code with you. And you notice that it's very clean. I like to have just the content, the video, whatever relevant code. I don't like there to be a lot of clutter, whether I'm talking about the theme editor or teaching you about PowerPoint or even creating getting started tutorials. You notice that everything's pretty clean on this website. And that's because I don't generate ads on the website. In the future, I'm looking to get some sponsorships, and that will be those will be meaningful sponsorships by products that I trust and know, and then I can relay those on to you and give you recommendations and tutorials and product demos. But it's really important to me that this website doesn't have advertisements, that it's just for educators and it's a clean interface. It's not like the cooking websites where there's an ad every other paragraph and it takes 10 paragraphs to get to the gist of it. I just wanna jump in and give you the content because you're educators, you're busy, you're important, and you need this information and you just need it quickly and cleanly. But I do want to mention that this content does take me time and energy to create and it does cost me money to have the website. Squarespace recently reached out and said that they're actually increasing the price of the registration. So it's going to be $252 for me just to own this website. And that'll be due at the end of this month. And I do receive some revenue from monetizing my ads. Just full disclosure, I'm pulling back the curtains on my this whole project, how to canvas. So Google gives me some AdSense revenue and I don't want to go to ads. I don't want to run ads on my website and I try and be minimal with the ads that I do run on YouTube too. I don't want them to be invasive so I don't have the pop-ups and I try not to be obnoxious about it. I, all of my ads are skippable, but there's another way that you can contribute if you feel inclined. 
on the YouTube video, if you see at the bottom here, there's a thanks. You can support with a super thanks. And here you can write me a message and you can do a contribution of $2, $5. I wouldn't feel comfortable, honestly, because this content is geared towards educators and teachers. I don't want uh, 50 or $10 contributions, but if a few of you did a two or $5 contribution, then that would really go a long way. I would appreciate it very much. And I would use the proceeds from that to upgrade my equipment. I have a camera that I'd like to upgrade. And of course the website domain is coming up and I really want to make that free and unobtrusive for everybody. And in reality, this project is a passion project and it's something I do on my nights, weekends, and holidays. I sacrifice time with my family so that I can prepare, edit, and produce this content. And each video takes me somewhere in the neighborhood of eight hours to create. Sometimes it's more than that, sometimes it's less. It depends on how much research goes into each one of these videos. But my real goal for this channel is that I want you to be able to click on any one of my videos and take something from it. I want it to be amazing. And so a lot goes into the pre-production, the recording, um, the editing, and then if I have to create social media and I have to upload it to YouTube and then write a blog post about it on the How to Canvas website and put the code there. And it's a very fun and involving process, um, but it does take time. And so if you're looking for a way to support this channel, then this would be a great feature, the uh, super thanks. Write me a note, and perhaps if you like one of my particular videos, you can do the super thanks on that video to let me know that that's the direction I should be going in. Maybe I should be exploring more of that particular topic or those particular features. And I'll gladly take that into account for the future production and what I'm researching and looking for, how we can improve Canvas. So with all of that out of the way, I appreciate all of my subscribers. I'm not even going to ask people to subscribe anymore. I did that in my previous videos. If you like the content, you'll just subscribe and I don't really care to take time in the video. So from now on, I'm not even going to ask people to subscribe. I'm just going to produce the content. If you like it, you know what you to do. And so let's get into this, uh, the glossary. So last week we looked at this accordion menu and the accordion menu is basically this code. You have details and summary and you can watch last week to get the overview of that but each one of these has a summary and then it has the paragraph underneath the summary and i for the examples on this page i use this second example the first and second examples are slightly different the second example has a little bit of padding and it has a frame that goes around the definition and so that's what i used and then for this glossary right here, so I just stack three of them on top of each other. You can see three details. In this case, they're all exactly the same. They have the same border. And then I have this style, which is a cursor that turns into a pointer. And so notice my cursor as I hover over the glossary, it changes to a pointer. You can see that finger pointing and that indicates to the students that this is something interactive and that you should click on that. And then when they click on it, then they get this interaction. And so what I did is before and after all of these accordions, I used the div. So the div has 15 pixels padding that puts padding from the top, left, and the bottom. and gives it a little bit of space. And then I put this background color and you can see the background color right there. It's kind of an eggshell taupe color. And then I put some margin at the bottom, 25 pixels, and that just gives me some space right there. And that way I don't have to go on the keyboard and hit enter a few times. It's better just to put a margin. And so it's really simple code. That's all I did is put this div here with a little bit of styling and then I get this box that's colored. Then I did the same thing over here. I put some padding, I put a different background color and I have the margin there. And then for each one of these accordions, I put a different color. And so you can see there's four different colors. There's the background and then there's one, two and three. And so all I did is in the summary right here, in addition to having the cursor as the pointer, I put a background color and then I just specified which color I want. So I got those colors from the website colors.co and here you can generate color schemes and what I like is that you can take a color that you like, in this case it's cadet blue, and then you can have various shades and tints. And you just click on one of these and then you can access the code for that. So this is the hex code for that particular color. And then I hop back over to the um, accordion menu. And then I can put that color as the background color. So I'd paste that in. And in this case, I had different colors. So the background and then the foregrounds are different. And then the foregrounds are different gradients. 
and I just went through and grabbed different gradients from the website like this. And this is a great way that you can get color schemes for your canvas pages. And so you notice here that I also put some padding on the left hand here. So this first one doesn't have any padding. The second one has padding left five pixels. So I pushed it out five pixels. The second one, I pushed it out 10 pixels. And I probably wouldn't do that sequentially like that. I'd probably just pick one number, but this is just so that you can see the difference between these first ones. And since I have background color for these, I felt that it's important to push it out just a little bit so that it doesn't go right up against the edge. If I didn't have a background color, like this first example up here, I don't think that would be so important because it's already not against the edge over there. But this one, I just wanted a little bit of padding. Me personally, I'd probably go with five pixels. 10 pixels also looks pretty good, but I think I would choose one of those other than having no pixels for the padding on the left. It's completely up to you. So emojis are also a lot of fun. If you're gonna put emojis in the headings like this, then you would wanna put it within the summary. So here you can see summary. I have the cursor set to a pointer. I have a background color. And then the actual content that's displayed right here, that's where I would put my emoji. And on my Windows computer, I hold down the Windows button and press the dot, and then I can find all my emojis. And so you can just search through these, or you can start typing and it'll come up like type smiley face or hamburger or rainbow, and it'll appear here. And so you just select one of those as you're editing. And I do this in the HTML editor. You can also do it in the rich content editor, but I think that just working with all of this code is easier in the HTML editor. So emojis are a great way to communicate. You don't wanna to go too overboard with them or you don't want to apply meaning to emojis as well. Um, just make it fun for your students. This is the same code as before, except for I added some different styling. So I still have the color, the color of the text here, that greenish blue is this hex color. And then I have a font family, which is Arial Black. It's a much more bold font. It's a non-serif bold font. And if Arial Black isn't available, then the browser knows to use Avant-Garde, which is also a similar font. Most browsers do have Arial Black. They have access to that, so it'll probably just revert to that. And then you notice I put the font size as 28 points, so it's much larger than default, which would be more like 12 or 14, whatever your institution has set. And of course, the cursor is set to pointer. And then I put strong as well, which is how we bold the content in order to emphasize. And so I put all of that before I put the actual content. So that's all part of the summary. You can see that right here, the summary, it's all bold, it's large, and it's a different color, and it's Arial Black. And it, even when you increase the font like that, it increases the emojis as well. I didn't do any styling to the inside. So this is all just default. All it is is a paragraph right there with a little bit of padding as well but you can also change the content in there if you want, or you can just keep it like this. So that's another way that you can customize all of the accordions. And here's another approach for an accordion. This isn't an accor a typical glossary type accordion menu, but here uh, you can click to show and hide the gift. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna show it. I have the spinning panda, click to hide it. And so that's an interesting interaction for your canvas page. And I did that using the same code, the details and the summary code and then I put a div here, the div with a margin of 20 pixels, and that is below all of the content. So this padding right here, and that's important for me because it's you don't want to just hit return a few times and create those spaces artificially. You want to be purposeful. And so here's the details, and I have the summary. The summary would be all of this content that you see here, even when it's hidden, that would be the summary. And so I have my cursor set to pointer. I have a large font. I have a border, which is a one pixel border, a solid line, and it's a dark gray color or maybe a normal gray color. And that's what you see here on the border right there. I have a background, which is a much lighter gray color. And then I have some padding. So on the top right bottom, I have 10 pixels. And then on the left, I have 20 pixels. So that's what we're seeing right there. And then I have the border radius set to 25 pixels. And that gives it kind of this button like effect, kind of like a pill. And so it curves out those corners. And you can play around with that number too. 25 pixels, try five pixels, try 50 pixels, see what the difference is. And then I put the width to 230 pixels and that's just trial and error. And then I have the roll set to button. So roll equals button. And then I have this code here, aria-expanded and false. And that means when you log onto the page by default, it's going to be hidden. And for screen readers, it's going to 
let the user know that there's some hidden content that needs to be expanded. And so that's what this would do for you. And I'm not really an accessibility expert, I would say, in the field. And I would love if somebody could chime in with this code. If Is this code that we should be putting on all of these summaries? Everything on the page that's hidden that needs to be expanded, should we have that code? I looked online and it wasn't entirely clear to me if this is necessary for, from an accessibility standpoint, or if it's nice to have, or if it's not even necessary or important. And so if you happen to know, please let us know in the comments below if this code is important for each one of the accordions. I definitely appreciate that. So um, moving on, we have the content here. In this case, it's an animated GIF. And so I have the div here. And the div is just so that I can put margin on the top. And I could have done that with the image, but it looked better with the, the div, I thought. Margin on the top, meaning from the picture to this button here, I wanted 20 pixels. So the 20 pixels below the picture is from the div right here. And then the div right here, um, the second div is giving me 20 pixels on the top. And then the image, I just uploaded the image right into Canvas. And so you can upload your own image into Canvas or use an image that you already have in Canvas. If you wanted this particular image, the spinning panda, then this code's not gonna work. You're gonna have to save the image and just put it on your computer and upload it into your Canvas course, and then it'll work. And the last interaction that I wanna share with you, so I have a header here, and then I have some text, and then I have this floating box right there. And this is, again, using the accordion menu, but it's in a different application than what we've seen before. So let's walk through the code here. Uh, for this box, I have the class set so that I can have a border, and the border is round, so you notice those corners aren't sharp. They have a little bit of a curve to them. And then I have some styling, so the color, that color is the color of any uh, font that I have in there. I'm having it float to the right, and so it's on the right side of the page. That lets the words come up against the left and the bottom. And then I have a width of 350 pixels. You can choose whatever pixels you want. And then I have the border properties. So it's six pixels wide. It's a solid line as opposed to dotted or dashed. And then I have the color. And I use that color also for the words, the content that I have later on. And then the background color is, it's the same color as the border, but I lightened it up using coolers. So I just went to um, coolers and chose something that was much lighter. And then I put a little bit of padding and margin in there. And then I go to an H2. The H2 is just the normal H2. I added some properties. And so those are the words right there, the properties that I have right there. And then I put in two accordions and then one of them is here. And so I can see the summary. The color is the same color that I did for this other text and the border. I just chose the same color there and I made it a pointer. And then I put an unordered list, a bullet list in there. And then for the second one, I did the same thing, except for I put some text. And the text is just a paragraph, except for I did decide to put some padding on the left, 10 pixels to the left. And that way it lines up more or less with the bullets right here. Otherwise, I, think, I felt like it was floating a little bit too far to the left, and I didn't really like that look. And so this is the content that I have for you. We have a quick links box. We have, you can show and hide an animated GIF. You can have big or small emoji filled accordions. You can have different background colors. You can have different degrees of padding on the left right there. So there's so many options that you can do with this code. Go ahead and hop over to my website, grab my code, grab all of that code, paste it into your sandbox course and start tinkering with things. Change the words around, change the styles, put your own color schemes in there and your own widths. And I think you're now outfitted to be rockstar Canvas developers with this interaction. So go into your classes and produce some amazing content for your students. Until next time. Happy Disney morning.